Hey, what's up guys, DP here from Team Triple Drive, and today I'm coming to you with a promised PBO deck. I promised this deck profile on Facebook page, so if you haven't liked this already, go ahead and like it. The link will be in the description below. Uh, now, this deck is more of a fun deck, to be honest. It's about tier 3, if I'm honest. It's not super strong. Uh, it's really kind of just there for nostalgia. So I'm playing as many nostalgia cards as I possibly can. Uh, however, I did incorporate some new ones because you just kind of you have to at this point and so for the most part Most of this deck will be either old stuff or like the new new forms of the old stuff But some some things here are completely new just because you Sort of have to play it uh, So yeah without further ado, I'll just get right into the profile. So first we play four Phantom Blast Overlords this card is only really good with uh, the following card, with Phantom Blaster Dragon, which we also play four of. So, you kind of play this deck differently from how you used to. PBO, when the set 5 was released, you used to play for the 13k body, and then uh, the Shadow Paladin stuff like Maka with the plus in is why you kind of played Shadow Paladins. Now you play this because you try and kill your opponent with a big crit swing and the guard restrict, which is what the break ride provides for this deck. You still want to keep the break ride and the soul for the 13k base, not only just in case your opponent survives, but also because you can make better numbers with it. So we play for each, you really want to get into the break ride, and because this is a persona blast, you need to play four. Now play for Marker, the new Marker uh, from the Legend deck. So her ability allows us to just get the combo pieces that we need. There's one specific card that we need for the Break Ride turn, which helps us actually do things. Because when Gene got well, when when Gene Guardians when G Guardians came out, this deck completely died out. This is why this card used to be 35 quid and now it is what 10, 12. Uh, that's great British pounds. I don't know what it is in dollars. So, this deck really took a dive off the cliff, to be honest. It never really topped. It was more of a hype thing rather than anything. But it just, there was no point of playing it. G Guardians came out, there wasn't any point of playing it because this deck just couldn't hit the numbers. One G Guard would stop it, and you're like, okay, well, fuck me, right? So, yeah. Oh no, YouTube will demonetize me now. Right, so next up we'll play Ford Dordana. Uh, my friend, if you watch our battle video, which I will upload after this deck profile, um, Momo said that I should be playing Blaster Axe, which is a tanky vanilla, and because then you can search Blaster Axe out with the Break Ride. And at first I was like, yeah, it's probably a better card, but I still prefer Dordonna's art, and so I'm playing Dordonna still for that. But also, the more I think about it, the more I wouldn't ever search Blaster, Dark, uh, Blaster Axe anyway, because if I have enough great threes, to the point where I don't need to use this skill to search for another great three, I'm not going to search for anything because there's nothing that I would want to retire. Like maybe except for Neme, which I do play two of. Uh, but if I want to retire her, I will retire her with one of my strides. So yeah, it's not like I need blast arcs because it's not going to be my search target anyway. Now, do play two Nemains because, oh right, I, mean, I should probably talk about Dordana. Um, Dordana is there for anti-rush because this deck, while you do want to be at limb break, you want to be at limb break at the right point. You don't want to get rushed to limb break because you don't have much recovery in this deck. Um, so, you want to be on limb break when you're ready to finish your opponent. You don't want to be there beforehand. Uh, Dodon is there not to be rushed early game, so you sit on the 10k body, your opponent cannot just poke you for 9, uh, which is very nice. Nemin is here for early fishing for the right card, so hopefully if you haven't gone to your Phantom Blaster Dragon, the Nemin will get you there. Uh, if not, it's a, still a plus, if you already have it, um, it's still a plus 1, to be honest. So, yeah, it's pretty good, I like it. And then you can sack her for your strides, as I said earlier. Now, that's it for the twos. I only play 10, which might potentially be a problem, but I've never misgraded on two yet. I misgraded on three, ironically, um, even though I play the recommended eight.
but never on two. It's strange. I think they haven't on two. Maybe I have once. I can't remember. But it's not often. It's not an often occurrence. Uh, I play for Ezra's as the PGG. Now, uh, in the battle video that you'll watch, I play Karma Collectors. And I'm not sure if I discussed it in the battle video, but Ezra's has the potential to be better than Karma Collector for the simple reason of this next card. Um, not only is it a return perfect guard, which is pretty cool, but the main reason is being able to utilize all four of him. And that's Knight of Red Flash, Thirtyus. Thirtyus is the reason this deck can be played. This is the reason I built this deck. Because as soon as I realized Thirtyus is not Luart specific, it's not even Jambrick specific, I was like, okay, you know what, PBO can still work. It's not consistent, but it can potentially be Guild Array numbers. So... If you don't know what Thirtyus does, it's a Ritual 3 ability that's not Gem Break. When it's retired, due to a cost on effect, uh, you choose one of your units and it gets plus 5,000 power. So, what's important about this is, he, A, he counts towards his own effect. So, if you break right and you have no previous green ones in the drop zone and you retire three of him, the Ritual will still activate, which is very nice. Uh, Number two, it gives your PBO plus 5k. So if you retire three, that's plus 15k altogether. You can be hitting like 56k columns. Um, with Ezra's, if you retire all four, you can be hitting 61 plus. You can max. Uh, max you can hit is, I believe, 73k columns with this deck, if I count this right. Uh, 56, 61 plus. Uh, yeah, I believe the max you can hit with this deck is 73k with a crit and can on guard great ones are high which is a huge huge number uh that's not going to happen very often it's probably never going to happen really unless you conserve a lot and the game drags out uh because what you'll need you'll need four of him for the 73k you'll need two ezra's in the drop zone as well as the ritual active and gem break active uh to tie one of him prior to the break right and you will need this following card, by the way, which will play for Charon. Um, so I'll quickly talk about him. You'll, you'll need him because he's an AK vanilla. Uh, so he makes 21k columns with PBO if he's cross ridden. Oh, obviously, with the skill, with the break right skill, with 30s, it'll be more. So He's good for that, he's good for those numbers, but also if you write him early game, he's again anti-rush. Uh, your opponent cannot rush you with grade 1s at that point. Uh, so, I originally I played Claudius Dorant, but A, they went nostalg nostalgic enough, um, and B, I realized I don't always want to stride. Sometimes I might go first, I might ride, and uh, swing into my vanguard then. And then they might rush me down so much that I want to kill them the next turn without striding and I want to go into PBO. And B, he is anti-rush, which is nice. Uh, so, in the game, you can protect yourself with him. Now, you'll need him for the super, super huge combo thing. And you'll also need to put four Howl Owls into the soul in one turn. So, that's already a spoiler of what I play. Uh, but to finish the Grave 1 slot, I play three of the new Charon. Um, the new Charon is just good for stride turns. If you don't necessarily have uh, Thirtyus is available, he can make you minus less. Uh, but he's there mainly for strides, to be honest. So let's have the great ones. We just out of all the old stuff, we only play Charon, sure. But we have seven Charons, which is pretty cool in my opinion. You know, we have Maccas, we have Nair Mains, which is what I used to play back in the OG PPO. We have Dodona, which I didn't used to play, I used to play the Masquerade, but 10k Vanillas have become better than 12k Attackers somehow. Uh, don't ask me. Anyway, um, for these years, I played the Dark Goat as the starter because you want to get into Dragon. If you don't get into Dragon, this deck is dead. You will want to rewrite into the Dragon. Uh, even if you go into PPO, and then get dragon later, you'll go and rewrite that dragon because if you don't ride the dragon, that's it. This deck dies completely. So, because uh, it doesn't have a good enough strike game to 
wheeze a lot of it uh, with just strides. So you do need to, that, to have that finishing. So the Dark Goat is there to fetch the dragon. Or if you already have the dragon, to fetch uh, PBOs. Uh, we'll play four heals. Play four Howl Owls. This is the only non uh, nostalgic trigger we have, but there's a reason for that. It's mainly a soul builder. Sure, it can provide more uh, power to your vanguard, but usually we'll use this early on something like Aura Geyser or a Spectral Blaster Diablo. So he's good for that. And then play eight critical triggers. Oh, look, look at these nostalgic uh, triggers like four Death Feather. Four Grim Reaper, four Abyss Healers, just ah, oh, so much nostalgia. Anyway, I'll move on to the G Zone now. The G Zone is quite basic, if I'm honest. So we play four Phantom Blaster Diablo. I kind of like to think of him as the Stride Fusion for the Great Threes because all of them are Phantoms, the original Phantoms. Like, so even though technically he's not a Stride Fusion, just. I mean, it's a nice thought. Um, play one Grim Recruiter. This is to fetch us um, our Thirdiuses, our Charons, if you want Charons. Um, that's basically it, just Thirdius or Charon, really. Um, either of the Charons, by the way. We we'll play one Carnivore Dragon. Carnivore is there because we can eat uh, Nemain if we used her early. And then just make our opponent retire. All of our, our opponent has really important units uh, that can potentially tip the balance in their favor. Uh, and we can kill them with the carnivore. That's why we run him. Play one animus pile. This is often a stride that I use as my second, third stride. If the game is going on for that long. Uh, because what it allows me to do is just without retiring, without uh, counter blast, without playing any kind of cost, just win for Big, big number, which is nice. It's a free blizzard. I love it. Uh, this is the same Jason I actually play with my Abyss deck. My Jason's don't alter that much between decks. Uh, I play one Spectral Blaster Diablo. Uh, a restand is nice. If we can get into Howl Owl and have a Charon or something as well, just having a restand accessible to us is always nice. Then play three Geyser. And one doomed. Um, we barely kind of go into either of them because A, a retire 3 is a high cost and we don't plus that much. So the only time we want to be retiring 3 is for PBO. And this is a soul, so unless we have Howl Owl, we don't really want to use him either. However, if we do have Howl Owl, this can potentially gain us a lot of hand. And Charon comes in handy then for it to be a plus instead of a break even. Whew. Mouthful, yeah. Um, to finish off, we'll play three plot make and one dismal. I'm sorry, this I'm my, I have one dismal for all of my decks, so I'm just alternating the sleeves. Um, plot make is insane, even in this deck, because you will most likely have uh, ritual three active, since we do have quite a few great ones. Um, we, can, we have the Charons, we have the PGs, uh, so plot make is just an amazing. Amazing card. Plus, it's not like Shadow Paladins have anything better. If you want, you can play once Cryo here instead. Uh, potentially more useful than a plot maker. But, I don't know. I haven't had a point where I need to scry you instead of a plot maker yet, so I keep playing it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this deck profile, guys. It did go on for quite a bit, but yeah, I mean, this deck is fun. It's not good, it's fun. Uh, I'm trying to make it as good as possible, but it's just, it's had its time. PPO is already, it's a dying breed now. So unless they release crap ton of new PPO support that especially makes exactly this deck amazing. I doubt it'll come back to being tier 1 or even tier 2 probably. But you can always pick this deck up, it's cheap. Like, PPOs are about 5 or each. Uh, this is now 10 or each. Um, you don't have to play Ezra, so you can play any old PGs. So you can pick MacLear up for about two, two and a half quid. So you can get a playset of the old MacLear. You can get a playset for about a tenner. 
Uh, this is about 250, so that's also a tenner. I mean, this is a couple of pence, this is a couple of pence as well. This is a couple of pence. Uh, this was 125 each, that's two and a half quid uh, for the two. And uh, this will be about like maybe a quid each in common. Uh, then cheap, in common I'm sure you can find them for a couple of, maybe a quid each max. Uh, pennies, pennies, pennies. Uh, right. G zone, um, the necessities really. Uh, you can pick up a common play set of these for a tenner. I see them go on trading page on the trading pages. This is a necessity. Uh, then plot makers are important because they can actually protect your ass. So, this will probably be a biggest investment of 16 quid, uh, 15 quid. Dismal is not necessary. But it's nice to protect your thirdiuses if you are setting up birdies, so this would be nice if you have it. But really, like, this is nice, it's a pound. This is nice, it's a pound. Uh, this is nice, it's like 50p. Uh, Orgizers and spectrals are not necessary. They're not the women, winning image of this deck. Uh, spectral is quite expensive, so you might want to not get him if you're on a budget. But if you already have a bunch of Shadow Paladin stuff, if you already have a Shadow Paladin deck, and you've been playing since the beginning of Shadows, and you just kind of feel a bit nostalgic, um, try this deck out. It's fun. It's not great. It's fun. Um, now, I will be profiling um, Break Ride Abyss. Break Ride with this Break Ride. Oh my god, that deck is filthy. It is actually amazing. I love it so much. It's currently my favorite Shadow Paladin build. Um, not necessarily the strongest, Luard is still stronger because it's fast, it's recovery is absolutely bonkers. But the Break Ride Abyss is really, really strong and it's really fun. Um, I will be profiling that next. Uh, is that or my profile, profile uh, Nubitama? So, yeah. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This has been DP from Team Triple Drive, signing out. <laughs>